as you've understood, I, once I made the move to, uh, to go and live in Turkey. Uh, and actually I would like to start off with a, a piece of advice for people traveling to Istanbul. Uh, as soon as you hear the announcement of the pilot on the plane saying like the plane is about to start a descent, is about to start landing, I would advise you to take a look out of the window. You will see buildings dotted around in the scenery, in the, in the landscape. These are already the outskirts of Istanbul. You will still be like 20 minutes away from the actual landing, but nevertheless, these buildings are already part of Istanbul. And of course, obviously, by getting closer to the airport, the building gets more dense, more intense, and by the time you actually land, you realize, you will realize, you, will, you are surrounded by a sea of concrete, a, a mass, a forest of buildings as far as the eye can see from north to south, from west to east. This is Istanbul, one of the biggest cities in the world. 15, 16, 17, 18 million people, nobody seems to know. I remember the first time I, I saw this, you know, watching out of the, the window of the airplane. I was scared, I was intimidated. Uh, I was at the same time fascinating. I thought it was really challenging. And when I was 37, I was in a position, I was living here, I was in a position both privately and personally to go and try, to start from scratch, which is what I did. I took a plane to Istanbul, to this challenging city. I didn't speak the language. I didn't know anybody. I didn't have a place to stay. Well, I did, but just for a couple of weeks and I didn't have a plan. And still I went and from that moment on I felt like this is perfect for me because I could get lost in Istanbul. A couple of years later, while living in Istanbul, I watched this Turkish movie, uh, a low budget movie called Uzak, which means uh, far, far away in this context. And I could relate to the main character in the movie because it was about a very classic Turkish story about somebody moving from the countryside to the city, uh, from a village to Istanbul. A very classic Turkish story because millions of people did this. And I, I could relate to the main character really easily because I did the same thing in the opposite direction. I migrated too from west to the east, he from the east to the west. I'm a migrant, I became a migrant. Um, in the last 10 years. While watching the movie, I realized I had another thing in common with him, because most of the movie was shot during a couple of days in the winter of 2003. I had just arrived in Istanbul, but I remember those days really well. Istanbul was paralyzed with snow this big, you know, this high. It was amazing. I'd never seen that, many, that much snow before, and I haven't seen it afterwards either. Istanbul was completely paralyzed, and exactly those days, they were shooting the movie. And watching the movie, I realized the main character in the movie did exactly what I had done during these days. Walk, walk the streets of Istanbul, take in the city, absorb. I even walked the same streets as the person in the movie did. I never met them, I didn't see the shooting, but it might have been a possibility. The difference between him and me, the fictional character, and then the real me, is he went back, he went back to his village in the movie, I stayed, and I think I know why. He knew exactly what he was looking for. He wanted to have a job. That was what he, that was, he was looking for. Couldn't find it, went back. Failure. I went to Istanbul without knowing what to expect. I went to look for inspiration, and I found inspiration. And I look back at the last 10 years, call it a gamble, whatever you call it, as the most interesting 10, by now actually almost 11 years of my life. I don't think it's necessarily, always necessarily, necessary to have a plan. We know Christopher Columbus, he had a plan, but he had a, a plan to discover India, if I'm not mistaken. He discovered the Americas. And I wouldn't like to make a list of inventions which were discovered by sheer coincidence. So, don't be afraid to take a gamble. In fact, I expected a bit more, a bit younger audience, to be honest. Uh, 
but because I know nowadays students have excellent opportunities to travel, to explore, entering uh, exchange programs, Erasmus, whatever it is. These things didn't exist in my time, but I would advise any young person to actually use the opportunity to go and live abroad, either to study or to work. And I didn't study at the Jesuits, but if I'm not mistaken, they have a saying, a catchphrase, the Jesuits. Plus est en vous. There's more inside of you than you know. And I can really identify with this. Because by moving abroad, you become somebody else, actually. Because your identity is actually formed by the way people look at you. Um, let me give you a very basic example. Being a Belgian, being a journalist, and living in Istanbul, these three rather banal, like common characteristics, do make me unique. Because, there, because I know for a fact there is no other Belgian journalist living in Istanbul or Turkey. Speaking the language quite well, Turkish, allows me to participate in Turkish media. This too kind of makes me unique. Don't this, don't, this is French of course. <laughs> this plus est en vous is really valuable to me, makes sense to me. There is more of you inside of you at the same time. I know it's very hip to travel. I, 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 know, I know people who travel the world in 10 months, 12 months, they take a sabbatical between jobs or uh, before entering the labor market. I, would, I wouldn't do that. I would strongly discourage people to travel the world. My advice to them is don't travel far, don't travel long, travel deep. Meaning, stay. Stop and stay. Stop, you know, cruising the world. Stop and stay and listen and look at the world cruising around you, evolving around you. You will learn so much. My advice is to leave your comfort zone. Because actually your comfort zone is much bigger than you think. And if you talk about migration, either you migrate or migration comes to you. There's no stoppage anymore. The world is becoming so small, technology is changing, facilities are changing. And the comfort zone we define, I think, for most of us, is a European comfort zone. Places we know, places we intensively travel to, we go for exchanges and, and, and languages we more or less know. Um, but that's really a little, a little part, a small part of the world, I realized. It's just a small part of the world. Only 6.9% of people on this planet are Europeans. And if it feels more, it's exactly because we are European. And we are, I would say, egocentric, which probably is quite normal. But So it, it means that the 6.9%, if it feels more, is basically because we are European, and secondly, because we have a dominant culture. The Western culture is a dominant culture. And how did it become dominant? By migrating. We also, 200 years ago, places such as, uh, countries such as Ireland, Germany, the Low Countries, Italy, Spain, we also migrated. With the result that this Western culture got really um, dispersed. And because of technology, there's a, a migration of knowledge, a migration of, of information. So I know migration is connected to a lot of really big you know, issues. It's one of the hot potatoes of nowadays world. Um, a lot of problems connected to it. But I would say don't be afraid. Become a migrant yourself. Push your limits, get out of your comfort zone, and you will learn a lot. Thank you very much.